Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope you've been doing great. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my February favorites. This video was a requested video by one of my subscriber friends, and it's a part of my Subscriber Love Month where I've been doing all of your requested videos. The Subscriber Love Month is coming to an end soon, and I'm so excited to share with you a little giveaway in token of my appreciation of you being a subscriber. And I can't believe this month that I've reached 1,000 subscribers. I told you in my goals video that I tried not to put a number on like what number I wanted to get to as far as subscriber goes, but to really focus on content creation and providing quality content to you so thank you for just being a part of my subscriber friends and I hope you will enjoy this video and the giveaway that I have coming up very soon so we're going to get right into my favorites for February okay so I have my little list here so I don't forget anything I'm going to start with books so there are three books that I've been reading probably like starting in January going into February the first one was uh, Joe Frost toddler rules so if you have a toddler I highly recommend this book if you're familiar with super nanny you've seen her transform families that the kids were out of control the big takeaways that I've gotten from this book is routine really matters be consistent and then finally if you've started off on the wrong foot with just creating patterns, healthy patterns, and as far as behavior goes or routine goes, it's not too late to get on the right track. I mean, you see this so many times in Super Nanny where Joe Frost goes in and there's just been some really bad habits or lack of habits, and it's just created chaos in the family and how just really buckling down and putting in those new habits can transform your home and your family. So I really like the hope that she gives, the practical wisdom and how to's in this book, and it really helped us to get Sophia, my toddler, on a good sleeping schedule and a play and eating schedule. So if you're looking for some help with your toddler, um, this is a good resource. I really like also that she has SOS um, toddler tantrums, how to handle toddler tantrums. So you can, it's a quick resource where you can just go right to like what to do if your child is hating the car seat or is screaming for stuff in the supermarket or things like that. So she has some really good tips in here. So yes definitely recommend checking this out and with all parenting books I think you should take it with a grain of salt maybe not everything you feel will apply to you or you want to implement in your home so um, it's neat that as a parent you get to kind of pick and choose what you think will work for your family but there's a lot of good resources and groundwork in here if you're looking for some help with that the second book is by Marie Kondo and it's called spark joy it's an illustrated masterclass on the art of organizing and tidying up. You may have heard about KonMari. It's a big buzzword. A lot of people have been talking about the life-changing magic of tidying up and this book and the work that Marie Kondo has done. And, and for good reason. There's a lot of good information in here about keeping things in your home that only spark joy, that you love, and to really just toss the rest. So she gives some good practical advice on how to get started with uh, purging your entire house. What I really like about her strategy is she has a good system of how to do your purging, which is really the first step. And I like that she tells you what items to begin with and which to finish with. So for example, she says to start not room by room because a lot of times when we organize uh, in a room or clean out a room all those items just kind of get dispersed to other rooms throughout the house which is definitely my tendency so that one room will be clean but all the other rooms are a disaster so she really recommends that you sort and purge um, by category so she recommends starting with clothes because that's the easiest to know if you like it or you don't and I do have a video that I put together on how to purge your closet KonMari style and I'll have that linked in the description box for you to check out if you want to get started with that first category of purging your home and then she ends with memorabilia which is you know something you could easily get caught up for hours looking through and deciding what you want to want what you want to keep and what you want to give away so she's really thought through how to streamline your purging and also what the criteria is for the items to know that if it really has a place in your home so I've, been enjoying this a lot. She has stories from clients that she walks you through and, and examples and I really enjoy the illustrations she has in this particular book. In her first book, I don't think that there are illustrations. I actually haven't read the first book. This is the only one that I own. But this one has nice little illustrations and drawings to show you how to organize practically every area of your home. And as you may know already from my goals video, 
that is my goal for my house is to get every single area organized. So if you're wanting to get uh, started with that and you really just need some big motivation and some practical how-to, I definitely recommend you pick up this book. I got mine used on Amazon. You can see it's already been well loved. So I'm sure you could find a good deal or you can check it out at your library. But I will say at the library, it's usually checked out. So it might be worth just buying online used. <laughs> okay, my third book is another organization book. And this one is by Cassandra Arson. And she is a YouTuber and a blogger. And um, you may know her as Clutterbug. She's got some fantastic videos on organizing your home. And she takes some, some similarities to Marie Kondo, but some differences. She actually talks about Marie Kondo in her book, not by name, but you know who she's talking about. And she doesn't seem to think that all of Marie Kondo's um, methods are practical because of how much time that it takes for busy people, which, you know, we're all pretty busy. So she breaks it down into 15 minutes a day organizing projects. So there are some similarities though in, in uh, the way that they're thinking as far as organizing and sorting and things like that. What I love about this book is the way that Cassandra explains um, that there are different clutter uh, personalities, clutter styles, and so she's personified them as bugs <laughs> and so for example I, I took a quiz in here which is included and I'm a ladybug that's my clutter style and so ladybugs look really nice and shiny and cute on the outside but on the inside underneath the their nice pretty shells it's like chaos and that is definitely my clutter style in my home I like everything to look clean put together put away but to accomplish that I will stuff things in closets you know in places where it doesn't really belong so there's just you know junk and stuff stuffed places and uh, so she has some really great organizing tips for each of the clutter styles in here and also um, I think this is really good, and I'll probably talk about this more in another video, for uh, your family as well, and to find out if you're married, what your spouse's clutter style is, so that you can sort of work together, because you may find that your spouse like has these tendencies of stacking up paper everywhere, and it drives you crazy. Well, it turns out that that is a, I think she personifies it as a caterpillar, that they like to have everything really neatly stacked and out where they can see it, and so, so if you have conflicting clutter styles and you're getting in each other's way and you're just like, why do you have paper everywhere? She has some good tips for uh, working with other clutter styles in your house as well. So um, she's hilarious. I like her stories in here and just her vibe. I think you'll just really enjoy this and 15 minutes a day is totally doable. So, so both of these I'm not quite finished with. They're kind of read a little bit, do a little bit sort of books. So I'll probably be in these for the next couple months as I'm reading and hopefully doing what's in here. But definitely recommend these if you're wanting to get your house in order this year. So those are my favorite books for February and now I'm going to get into some beauty things that I've been enjoying. The first one is an Urban Decay uh, powder. I was looking for a really good powder. I've been using mascara makeup. You may have heard that that's the brand that I've been using right now. And I liked the powder pretty well, but I wasn't in love with it. So I used up all of that powder and thought I might just kind of shop around. So this one is um, called the Illum Illuminizer Translucent Pressed Beauty Powder. So it has a little bit of a color, but when you put it on, you really can't see it. And it does have a little bit of a shimmer. And I've been enjoying it a lot. It's really kept the shine away and it sort of highlights a little bit. So you can also use it for strobing if you like to strobe, which I'm still not that familiar with, but this is, a, is supposed to be a good powder for that. And uh, yeah, I've just really been enjoying this. Definitely a favorite this year. And so while at Ulta, I was asking the young woman who was helping me about this because it can be a little bit pricey, Urban Decay, um, the Urban Decay brand. And so I asked her, how long did this last her? And she said it lasts her about a year. So I was like, okay, great. I need to be frugal here if I can be. And so I was glad to hear that this lasts for a long time. 
Another beauty product I've really been enjoying is this mascara by Benefit called They're Real. It's more of a natural looking mascara that um, really accentuates all of your lashes without being too caked on or heavy where they look fake. So the brush is really unique that it has a little ball on the end with spikes, which gets those lashes that often get missed with a regular brush. Uh, a regular mascara brush. So you can get those lashes in the corners of your eyes, those really little lashes, and then you can also accentuate those lashes on the outer corners of the eye. And so you, everything gets coated well, and it's that nice, natural, more clean look. I think this is a great pair with some tinted moisturizer, a little bit of concealer, chapstick, and a swipe of bronzer, and you're ready to go out and run your errands or do whatever you need to do. Something else that I've been loving is a new vanity mirror that my husband bought for me. It's a fold out vanity mirror that sits on top of uh, something else that's a favorite this month, which is a vanity. And it's a really dynamic duo. I love the organization that the vanity provides and the sleek design. I will probably end up trading out the hardware that's on the front, but I love all the little compartments that are removable. And I like that, especially with my clutter style of stuffing things out of sight, I like that there is so much compartmentalized, easy storage that I can place my things and, and it look neat and it'd be functional and I don't have to look at it all day. It just goes out of sight when I'm not using it. While my vanity has a really nice fold up mirror, I like something that has magnifying capability and also that has the lights on it. And the lights on this particular fold out vanity mirror is called daylight. So it resembles a natural light outside, which is the best to sort of see if your makeup even matches. You know, sometimes we get our makeup done and we realize like it doesn't match our neck and it looks completely unnatural or we didn't quite blend and conceal it correctly. It's also good for those pesky hairs and tweezing and things like that that you need to take care of. So I've really been enjoying that mirror. Another feature that I really like about it is that you don't have to plug it in. It works on batteries or you can charge it through a USB. So if you have to place it somewhere that there's not an outlet, no problem. And then you can also take it with you traveling if you wanted to do that. And my last beauty product that I've been enjoying is the Invisibobble. And I talked about this in a recent hair tutorial. I, I like it because it, there's less snagging and breaking of the hair. You know, sometimes you use a regular elastic and you take it off and it hurts. And then you have this hair wrapped around it that has broken off or gotten tangled into that elastic. So there's virtually none of that with this, which is important to me because, we, you know, when you have longer hair, breakage is usually one of the biggest problems that you can deal with. So this minimizes that and another thing that it does is makes your ponytails a lot more comfortable and there's less kinking going on. So if you throw your hair in a ponytail for an hour or something and you take out your Invisibobble, most people do not see a crimp with this. Uh, I've seen reviews where a couple people, they say I still see a crimp, but I, most people, they don't struggle with that. And I've noticed that it works pretty well with my hair and I have really thick hair and I really like the comfort that it adds to my ponytails. I used to not like ponytails at all just because it would pull, especially here on the part and it just hurt and I have a really tender head. So this provides a lot of comfort for just putting my hair up and then I like that it doesn't really have a crimp in my hair. So this has been a favorite this month little Invisibobble. The best deal for these, I bought mine at Ulta, I think for 10, for three. You should check on Amazon. You can get it for nearly half that. There's also other brands and I'm sure they work pretty well. I did buy a cheap brand before I bought the Invisibobble and two, I, I had came in like a pack of six, so it was double and it was only $4 for all of those but it did, two of them broke. So if you have thick hair, I think you probably wanna get higher quality, one of these coil bands so that they don't break and you wasted your money. So those are really cool. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I've been loving for self care. First thing I wanna talk about is this toothbrush that I've been using. These bristles are, um, infused with charcoal, activated charcoal, which is an antibacterial. And you know, there's so much bacteria that gathers in our toothbrush, which isn't only bad for your breath, but it also um, doesn't guard as well as it can against yellowing of your teeth because bacteria is a big part of why our teeth yellow. Not all of it, but some of it. 
And so because this has an antibacterial in it, that minimizes that. Another thing that I really like about this is that the bristles are kind of tapered. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so it really gets in there, especially in the gum. And I feel like my teeth are really um, polished. When I, my, with my other toothbrush, my old toothbrush, I felt like there were some spots that were being missed and I can still feel, I don't know, sounds kind of gross to talk about, but some grime or something, even if I would brush a lot and hard. This one, because of the design of the bristles, I feel like my teeth are just very smooth and polished and there's not any kind of grime still hanging out, especially in the bottom where the teeth kind of overlap a little bit. <laughs> also like that the base is wood seems a lot better than, than the plastic. So along with this, I've been trying a new toothpaste. So there was a time that I was looking for natural or DIY whitening solutions, and there were four key ingredients that I came across in my research. One was baking soda, the other was peroxide, the third one was coconut oil, and the fourth one was activated charcoal. Those four uh, ingredients were like the top four whitening your teeth at home. And the commonality between all of them is that they're an antibacterial. And this toothpaste contains three of the four that I researched. And so this is called Activated Charcoal and Coconut Oil, Nature's Whitening Toothpaste. It's by Cali White. And I've really been enjoying it. It's kind of a shocking experience when you first use it because uh, with Activated Charcoal, it's black. So when you put it on your toothbrush and put it in your mouth, you look really creepy because you have black teeth or you know a little bit of black on your teeth. But I have to say, after using this, my mouth really feels fresh and deodorized. It doesn't just feel like I have a minty taste that's masking uh, anything. It feels like it's really just been deodorized my whole mouth. So I feel like I have fresh, fresher breath, and I do feel like my teeth are very well polished. And I've only been using it for a few days now. But I do know that all of these ingredients work to whiten your teeth or to keep them white. So these are both definitely favorites. I've been enjoying them a lot and I'll have them linked below. Something else that I want to share with you that have been favorites are three YouTube channels that I've really been enjoying. So there's a lot of YouTube channels that I like and YouTube friends that I have. If you want to see the comprehensive list of who I follow, you can check out my subscriptions through my homepage to see all, all the people that I'm subscribed to and there's some really lovely, awesome channels there. But today I wanna to highlight three that I've particularly been enjoying this month. So the first one, you may have heard of it if you've ever searched for yoga on YouTube. Yoga with Adrian comes up at the, like, the very top after yoga. And I've really been enjoying her 30 day true um, sequence series that she's done that she did for January. So I started it here in February and I've been doing it almost every morning and it's been a, such a highlight of my day. I feel like I'm just starting off so just rejuvenated and relaxed and well stretched and even forming some muscles. I can already see my body responding to the exercise uh, just with the energy that I have and with how calm I feel at the start of the day and also how strong that I've been getting. So it's been really just a neat way to start the day uh, before everybody wakes up. I do it early before anyone gets up and it's just nice uh, self-care time. And if you haven't checked out Yoga with Adrienne and you've been interested in yoga or getting started into something that can really benefit your body, um, I definitely recommend checking her out. She's really um, chill and fun in the way that she presents yoga. And if you're new to yoga, you've been kind of curious about it, I think she's a great resource to get started with. The other YouTube channel that I've been loving is called Farmhouse on Boone. And it's not that big of a channel yet. I think it will be because the content is really good and it's just consistent and there's just a, a main focus. You know what you're there for. Um, I know with a, a lot of us lifestyle channels, we're can be something of a hodgepodge of content, but with I think with Farmhouse on Boone, it's just very focused content and, and, and it has a niche. So Farmhouse on Boone is all about a handmade home, natural living, whole, whole food cooking, and things of that sort. I've uh, pretty much binge watched her channel, was watching on how to, um, 
how to make kefir and she has like how to make bone broth and a lot of the gut healthy recipes that are kind of circulating now which are so so good and she also has some cool tutorials on how to, to make things at home stuff like a body butter and things for your house and just check her out she's really got some good content she's a mom I think of five so that to me is so motivating that she can do all that she does as far as whole food cooking and um, having a handmade home and uh, just the wholesome environment for her kids all that with her five little kiddos so check her out she's she's awesome you'll love her and the third channel I think is gonna be a bit of a surprise I don't know if you've ever heard of the show called unshackled but it's a radio program originally based out of Chicago and it's basically um, life stories of how different people in pretty much in chains in their life um, breaking free out of that by finding the love of God. And I didn't really know much about it until I was a missionary overseas. And Unshackled is really good about getting their broadcast throughout the world, which I think is awesome because it's such messages of hope where people are just like in the pits of despair and uh, their lives are falling apart and then how they come to know God in a really real way and how their lives changed after after that by the working of God, not really by their own strength, but by God working in them. And so um, Ben and I, my husband and I have been listening to this at night uh, before we go to bed and it's like 30 minutes, each one of them. And it's a dramatization of these life stories. And it's been really good. Um, and just encouraging to hear how when things look like they cannot be turned around in a life and maybe you know somebody just like they're never going to change and they just continue to hurt people and you know what I mean so it's kind of like those kinds of stories where you don't think that there's any hope for somebody or for a situation and how things can change and I just love that it's true stories that we can really learn from and if you check it out I have the channel below um, when you first listen to it you're gonna be like Abby what is this? Because there's this crazy organ music that they play. I don't know why they play that, but whatever. But the stories are really good. Give it a shot. I know you'll be encouraged if you do, but just don't mind the creepy organ music. It was so funny when I pitched the idea to my husband. I was like, Ben, have you ever heard of the show on Shackle? Maybe that's something we can listen to at night. He was like, oh, yeah, I remember. I was never uh, allowed to listen to that growing up. <laughs> so it's just hilarious to me because so many of us, like, we weren't allowed to watch MTV or something growing up. But his was, oh, you can't watch Unshackled. <laughs> and I, I can actually, I can see why because it's real adult themes in there but I mean it's real life and it is about God but it starts off pretty heavy in these situations where people are dealing with stuff like r stuff real people deal with so it's not like a Sunday school kitty thing and I don't think I can recommend it for children either but it would just it is just funny to me that <laughs> he wasn't allowed to listen to unshackled program but anyway, so those are my big favorites. My final favorite is this really awesome step stool that we got from my daughter, Sophia. I've really been wanting to include her in the kitchen uh, activities, such as washing dishes or preparing food and dinner and stuff. And so I was looking for something called a kitchen helper, which is this special step stool for kids to use to um, to help in the kitchen. So this one that we found was the cheap, one of the cheapest ones we could find. It's all wood um, and, and the design is pretty well, but it does what we wanted it to do, which is help us to include Sophia in uh, a lot more around the house. Instead of like, okay, you go play while I make dinner and get to come and say, hey, come help me make dinner. Come help me do the dishes. And she's just been enjoying it all the more. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed this video and seeing what my favorites were for February. And I would love to know what have been your favorites for February and you can comment below also if you have read any either of these books or been um, familiar with these two I would really be interested to know what you think of the ideas presented in this and if they've helped you in your your house 
I can't believe we're coming to the end of the subscriber love month. It's been really fun to take on your requests and I'm planning on doing more of your requested videos in the coming months. So if I didn't get to your request, there's a good chance that I'll be coming up even just next month or the month after that. So I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.